Hey everyone, Fragger here from Achievement Hunter, here to bring the next episode of Retroactive, where it is Fuck It Spooky Games Month Experience Extravaganza. And this week we are doing Clock Tower. Technically this is Clock Tower 2, because there was an original one that was only released in Japan, which was called Clock Tower. But we're just going to go by the US names, because this is just as confusing as the whole pre-Final Fantasy 7 numbering thing. That just... Ugh. But Clock Tower here is a very unique game in a lot of ways because this is pretty much an adventure game and a point and click adventure game at that. And way back when I picked up this game for the first time, that was something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it to be in the same vein as the Resident Evil series. Clock Tower as a story is very weird because it mainly revolves around the events of people from the first game, but spoken in a more nebulous sense. Like, something happened last year with the Scissor Man, he killed some people, some people are freaked out, and what ends up happening is, is a little bit after this starts, the Scissor Man descends on people. Now, what makes this a little more unique is, depending on how you act in the prologue with who you talk to and whatnot, is who you play as. So that also, kind of like what happened in Eternal Darkness, you've got a neat little mechanic here where you can play the game multiple times as multiple people. Now the more and more you play this game, of course, more and more things are going to be unraveled, and you're going to learn more about what's actually going on. What I really feel sets Clock Tower apart from most point-and-click adventure games, especially in the horror genre, is, is the actual sense of dread when you're in the scenarios because the way this game is set up as prologue intermission then scenarios and there's intermissions between the scenarios and when you're in the scenario sections what happens is if you take too long to do shit the scissor man will come to get you and you have to flee this could be in the middle of a puzzle this could be in the middle of investigating as soon as you hear his music he's coming to get you you could also be going into an elevator and he pops out and then you have to run away from him that i love to death you don't see shit like that in a lot of adventure games. The only game I can think of that does something even close to that is the timed responses that are filtered throughout the Walking Dead game by Telltale. But, like I say for most of these, if you really want to know what's going on in this game, you really need to play it. And this is one of those very few games that, you know, I say it all the time, go out and play it. Seriously. Seriously. Go out and play this game. All the Clock Tower games are pretty fantastic. And this is when I really hope that we see resurgence of this game series. Now, what I would love to see with this game is I would love to see this one redone or rebooted or just give us another clock tower. Give us another great point-click adventure game. My biggest problem with when I was replaying this game was is that other than the prologue, it had very little audio. It's pretty much just sparse, something's happening and the scissor man music there's no dialogue it's mostly text and that kind of sucks but you know that's the age of this game i would absolutely absolutely love to see another thing like this but that's enough of me throwing my fist into my knee and saying absolutely a few times and if you want to find a place to get this good luck you're probably gonna have to dig up the actual ps1 game throw it into your ps3 which might play it i don't really know how that works people in the comments will probably correct me i don't own a ps3 so i don't know exactly how that shit works but that'd be really the only way to play this thing right now that or a ps2 obviously but that's gonna do it for us here this week and check back next week for the second to last spooky game